I'm Tatum Skipper and welcome to Real Florida Magazine. Welcome back here again today on the beautiful campus of Florida Panhandle Technical College. Here today with Melissa Reddick, who is no stranger to the show. Melissa has been on before talking about Chipola Healthy Start. Uh, we're going to talk about what's happening with kids, what's happening with children from an educational point of view as Chipola Healthy Start does and uh, find out all the uh, new information about just that from Melissa when we return and we will be right back. Welcome back. Uh, our guest today, as mentioned, is Melissa Reddick from Chipola Healthy Start. Thanks for taking the time. This is uh, a beautiful day outside. First of all, if I was outside working today, I don't know that I'd want to come inside in a stuffy old studio like this. So thanks for taking the time. You mentioned that you have some things coming up. Um, what's going on with Chipola Healthy Start? Well, the biggest thing um, we have going on right now is we're prepping for our annual community baby shower. And it will be held April the 29th from 12 to 2 p.m. at Rivertown Community Church in Mariana. And it's open to any family who is expecting or has a child up to the age of three that lives in either Calhoun, Liberty, Jackson, Washington, or Holmes County. Wow, you may have a whole bunch of people there. Well, we usually average around 400 a year, that, that's families, not, that's not individual people, but about 400 participants, families. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, a, a community baby shower. Now, um, I know a little bit about what a baby shower is. Does that mean that these folks are going to come and maybe have some educational opportunities, but, but also maybe get some parting gifts and uh, be able to enjoy that community celebration of being a parent-to-be or, as you point out, up to the age of three, maybe learn some things that you should know about your children uh, that you already have? Well, it's all of that. Actually, this is the only maternal child health fair in our area. And we have the great fortune of being able to host that every year. And what parents will gain from coming to the event, I mean, we will be giving gifts like you would a, a regular baby shower because a lot of our families don't have that opportunity. Um, we will be giving away diapers, wipes, other essentials that they'll need to bring baby home. We also have outlets there that can provide all sorts of educational information and a lot of agencies. Last year, I think we had about 30 that were there on hand to answer any questions mom and dad might have, and sometimes grandma or grandpa, because they're there too. Is there a some sort of a financial uh, requirement? Do people have to meet a certain uh, fiscal uh, category, um, as, for instance, uh, as far as uh, the wages that they earn in order to qualify to go, or is this completely open to the public? This event is completely open to the public. We offer it at no charge. We offer not just the baby essentials I mentioned, but we also provide lunch. Um, we actually have some of the local high schools, culinary um, departments, baking the cupcakes for us. And that's wow. a good thing for the children in the departments who are trying to learn how to bake and how to decorate. And it's also great for us because we get more community involvement. We actually have a knitting group from Calhoun County who have volunteered to knit 400 baby blankets to be given away at the event as people come in. Wow. As an attendee, it's a no-brainer. I mean, if, you're, if you uh, have a child up to the age of three or if you're expecting, Great opportunity to um, to get a lot of swag, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. To me, what appeals even more is that educational opportunity. We say many times that there are children having children, that there are people that are too young or not educated enough to be a parent having those children. And that's our, pro our fault as a society, as a parent, as a grandparent. We should make sure that our children, grandchildren, whomever, friends who are pregnant are going through those right health steps and educational. This sounds like it's a good opportunity to do just that. Now, who would some of the vendors be that uh, would be at the, at the show? The main goal is to provide education and contact points for those families. Um, of course, we'll be there. Each of our County Healthy Start programs will be present. They'll be ready to sign people up for services if they feel that they need it. Um, Healthy Families of North Florida will be there. Um, DJJ, PAEC will be there, especially um, Child Find, who does all the testing to test for early possible learning delays. Um, early Steps, um, the Early Learning Coalition, 
and the backpack program will be there again, Backpack for Kids with Ms. Mary Nail Griffin. Um, 90 Works will be on hand to sign up any child for health care that might still be without it, they'll be there to sign up anyone for anything they could possibly need. And the list goes on and on and on. I mean, last year we had 30. I think I've already had at least 15 responses, and I just sent out the invitation about two weeks ago. Wow, that is strong. Are you going to be doing any screening for those children uh, between the age of birth and three years of age, um, hearing or vision screening or anything like that? The people who will be on hand to do physical screenings, um, the nursing program at Chipola was kind enough to come do well checks for moms and dads last year, and they'll do it for the children as well. Um, and hopefully the Department of Health will be on hand to do um, sugar checks, glucose checks for anyone who might need them. Yeah, and that's important. We have the fortune of working with Early Learning Coalition of Northwest Florida. And some of their educational um, tenants, such as you're in the car, you're listening to the stereo, your car stereo, you've got it at a certain volume, chances are that's too loud for your newborn or your, your children that are in the back seat. You're at the beach, you've got sunglasses on, think about the fact that your kids need them as well. Some of these things we would initially say that's common sense, but so often you don't think about that little person as having the same needs or being more sensitive than we as adults are. So I know in the case of Early Learning Coalition, they'll certainly be making use of that venue to do just that. Um, RCC, um, the uh, they are very engaged in the public. There's a lot of events that go on there. They're perched right there on the hill, on the river. They're in a great location, easy to tell people how to get to it. Um, you say they are actually a vendor as well, or are they offering some kind of a service, um, maybe even just an outreach to the church? Well, RCC was very generous. They donated the use of the entire sanctuary and the other classroom facilities and other meeting facilities there at that huge Mariana campus. Plus, they'll also be providing some volunteers for us. We've also had the Knights wow. of Columbus from Blessed Trinity and Bonifay volunteer their time to come and help with wow. the event. Wow, so we really have strong. a lot of community support. I mean, Bluntstown Drugs just donated two beautiful gift baskets to be given away. West Florida Electric donated a fantastic grill to be given away. I mean, the community support we have is endless. And I just hope that we can just see as many of our families as we possibly can. The more, the better. How many years has this been going on? This will be our third community baby shower. And typically, how many attendees do you see? Um, on average, from the last two years, I think is about an average of 400 participants. But, and if someone comes from outside the area, we're not gonna turn them away because we're close enough to the county line in Washington County and Bay County. If they wanted to come on over, they can, and we can put them in touch with their local Healthy Start program if they needed that assistance. Yeah, and most of the agencies you talk about, especially ELC, and some of the others, they exist in, in this six or seven county area. They don't restrict themselves just to Jackson or any other single county. Tell us the date again. April the 29th from 12 to 2 p.m. That's a Saturday? That's a Friday. Friday. We wanted to give everybody the opportunity to come during their lunch break if they needed to, because some people can't ah. get away on Saturdays. I know from my experience with my own child, Saturdays are a mommy and me day. Yeah. So now they can just come at that small point in their lunch break, come on over, you know, they can get all the goodies, but they can also get that great educational information on safe sleep, on nutrition, on preconceptual health, on interconceptual health before you get ready for the next baby. We can help with smoking cessation because that is a huge problem in our area. I'd say about 80% of our moms actually smoke or have smoked prior to pregnancy. So we're there to help with any of that. Yeah, and I know our, our immediate area here um, has 15 or 20 percent higher incidence of diabetes than the state average. So many of these health issues um, are, are ones of which you should be aware if you're pregnant or thinking about becoming pregnant. And if you already have a child, things to look for that may be uh, hereditary in that child. So. 
two hours, 400 people, all these vendors, it's a jam-packed two hours. You're, you're talking about lots of activity going on. Yeah, there. it's nonstop, and we're always giving away door prizes. We're thinking of new games we can play this year with, audi with our participants. Um, and we also give them the opportunity to meet their doctors. And if they haven't chosen a pediatrician or if they're thinking of becoming pregnant, I would encourage them to come to this event to meet the local OBGYNs in this area and to meet representatives from the local hospitals where they would have their baby. That's what they're there for. It's just to meet people so they can get to know them before they start caring for them. Yeah, I mean, this is sort of a no-brainer from a health provider point of view. I mean, shame on anybody that doesn't want to be there in picking up all these additional clients. Uh, the opportunity to display what you provide as a, as a health care provider, uh, as any of these other vendors. How did this event start? Who is, is this one that, um, uh, that, that your organization, Chipola, Chipola Healthy Start, has, uh, has owned and started from the beginning? For our area, yes, we, we again offer the only maternal child health fair, which is what this is technically classified as, but it also serves as a baby shower. And this started back in 2013, and we've held one for the last three years. But the community baby showers for the Healthy Start program, statewide, all of our coalitions will offer one. So if somebody lives in another area, they're watching this, they need to probably check out um, their local providers to see if and when there is going to be one in their Absolutely. local area. Um, Bagel Franklin is having one sometime very, very soon, as in the Coalition for Okaloosa Walton. All they have to do is Google Healthy Start, and something will pop up in their area. They can scroll down or go to the state website for the Healthy Start program, and then they can find their local Healthy Start program, go directly to the website, and see when their next baby shower is. Great idea holding it on the lunch hour um, because you're going to serve food so that people don't have to go without eating, without lunch. The only Rub, I can see, is uh, do you encourage them to bring their children, or are you, are you trying to deal directly with mothers specifically? No, we want them to bring their children. Okay. We want, this is a family-driven event. The more kids that we can see, the better. Because mom might not or dad might not think they may need help from early steps, but early steps can be right there, and they can sort of talk to the child and see if there's anything they can possibly help with. Right. Or even... ELC, they can do the same thing as well. Um, maybe early childhood development in other counties, they can be there as well so they can get the child connected directly to that agency right there at our event. How long has it been now that you've been with Chipola Healthy Start? Um, I think I'm going on about 18 months. I knew it was in excess of a year. Are you having fun? I have fun every day. I'm in this for the babies. I. I don't know of any other job that would give me the same perks and just holding and cuddling loving babies at every opportunity. And you said that the first time you came on. Um, it's always a lot nicer to be able to make a living doing something you really enjoy doing. Um, it's trite to say, find something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. At the end of the day, you still find days when you're, 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 you feel great to go home and away from work, uh, and everybody expects that. But at the end of the day, um, if on the average you feel fulfilled, you're making a living, and you get to do what your passion is, um, that's huge. Your organization has really been aggressive uh, over the last few years. You guys have really come on strong, this event being a really good example of that. What else are you doing in the course of the year? Well, we're also organizing a diaper drive to get ready for the baby shower. I mean, we have 500 little bottoms on average born each year in our area, and they can use as much help as we can give them with that diaper drive. Now, with the diaper drive, if I wanted to go to Walmart and buy a, a big old wad of diapers, where would I drop them off or who would I talk to? You can drop them off at any of the Area Healthy Start program offices. You can drop them at the Coalition office, which is in Mariana. And as we continue to grow, um, we'll have more drop points as we progress. I know 95.5 is going to let us use their offices as a distribution point, too, if you happen to be in Dothan. Very cool. Diapers are a very expensive part of having a baby. They're very expensive. But unfortunately, only one in three families in America actually successfully provide enough diapers for their baby. Really? Yes. And the wow. problem with that is, um, for those every 
you know, two that don't have adequate diapers, they run the risk of suffering from health problems and possibly physical and emotional abuse. And their mother also runs a higher risk of suffering from depression. So, Amazing. Yeah, anything we can do to help keep those little bottoms covered and to help those families make sure they are healthy and happy and to make sure those babies have a healthy and happy start, we are more than happy to do that. That is what drives every one of us. When I was a kid, we had cloth diapers. Um, you had the rusty pins to hold the, the corners shut, I mean, or at least they were after a while, they were rusty. Um, and you, you flushed them in the toilet, and then you put them in a bucket of ammonia water or bleach or whatever you used. When uh, disposable diapers came out, it was, it was wonderful for new parents because you didn't have to deal with all that. But we're to the point where we're dealing with landfills, we're dealing with um, uh, running out of space for landfills. You mentioned um, before we started the show about education about how to use disposable diapers. Um, is that something that people might be able to, to learn about at this shower? Yes. Um a lot of people don't realize that even though it's a disposable diaper that you're supposed to empty out the insides in the toilet and then flush it and put the diaper in the trash. A lot of people just kind of throw the whole thing away. And that's really environmentally unfriendly. I would imagine so. Um, wow, uh, there's a whole lot that goes into being a parent. You know, so often we fault us as a society because we have children having children and they're not prepared to, in many ways, physically or mentally to have children. And that seems to just keep promulgating itself through the generation to generation. You guys do an awful lot in the way of education for parents to be, parents who have children currently. Um, if people want to find out more about all the services that you offer, what's the best way to do that? Um, the best way you can start um, is you can Google us at Chipola Healthy Start and we'll pop up. You can visit us on the web at ChipolaHealthyStart.org. Um, you can find us on Facebook or Twitter or even Pinterest. Or you can just contact your local Healthy Start program depending on the county in which you live. And you mentioned Facebook and Pinterest. Do you have a large social media presence where you're doing regular educational uh, updates and that sort of thing? Yes, we, I update all of that every single day, some days, on Facebook. Um, the same on Twitter. Pinterest is just a little bit slower. I may do it every other day. But there's always great, reliable information on any of our social media outlets. And do you find that you're getting good response from the consumer uh, 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 for that social media? Absolutely. Actually, our presence has grown. We actually have international um, users coming to our website, to our Facebook page and our Pinterest page just for the information. Wow. From people from the Philippines to people from the UK, actually in Turkey and Greece. I can see where they've come and just kind of mold around our page and taken that educational information. So that means we're helping not just our community, but a more global community. Yeah, a baby's a baby's a baby's. And if, it, if that baby uh, is in Europe or Asia or the United mm -hmm. States, the, the needs and the opportunities for, for dealing with the potential problems are the same. What's been the best part of working for uh, Chipola Healthy Start for you, other side from loving babies and, and getting to play with them all the time? What's, what's been the most fulfilling part? For me, it's always the babies. I just had a mom you know, share some beautiful pictures of her little baby girl with me. And to tell me all those stories and to hear all those stories about the babies, about the success stories, um, about the information I've actually given to a mom on our program has given to a mom, help her empower herself to take better care of herself and her children. That is the best possible part besides all the baby feet I get to kiss. <laughs> that has been the most rewarding part. So I, I would imagine your extended family is growing all the time. You're, you're, you're adding all of these uh, uh, nieces and nephews and, and uh, surrogate family members through these experiences. Mm -hmm. Good for you, and, and thank you for what you do. Um, thanks for Chipola Healthy Start. Um, you guys um, are doing some really noble work, sometimes a little thankless maybe. Um, are you getting good feedback from the other agencies that you mentioned that you cooperatively work with, Early Learning Coalition and the health departments and that sort of thing? Are they using you as resources as well? Oh, every single day. Every single day. I, I get a call at least from one agency about before noon 
needing some assistance or just needing a question asked. And I do the same thing for them. We all work together. We all are there to make sure we can sustain our community the best we can and to make sure we're using the resources we are given as responsibly as possible. That's one thing that we've seen, especially when it comes to health care provision for children, uh, all of these resources, all of these organizations work as clearinghouses for all the other organizations. So even though you pro provide what you provide, as you point out, you make available all of the other uh, contact information and you're able to uh, uh, suggest somebody look into some of these other services. And so collectively, you make up this little health community and um, as a new parent, someone should be pretty pretty darn happy that all of those resources are available. That said, do we find new parents using those resources overall, or in some cases, do we, we find some not? Well, we find parents using resources more and more every day, but there's still a small lack of education in some small pockets. Um, but that's how we come in and work with the health providers as well. I actually had one contact me earlier today wanting to refer or needing help referring one of her parents on for another resource for her baby. And that we never stop trying to connect all the dots and stay connected to each other to better serve the community. And we'll keep educating, we'll keep getting our name out there, we'll keep pushing until we can help every single baby we can. Well said, and that should be your slogan. It, uh, it would make a little lengthy one, but it definitely says it all. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming by today. Um, consider it an open invitation, as, as you have in the past, but um, anytime you have something going on, come on by and uh, let us know about it. Our viewers certainly can benefit from learning about that stuff, and, uh, and thanks for everything that you do. Thanks, Paul. Our guest today has been Melissa Reddick with Chipola Healthy Start, talking about the upcoming baby shower and the diaper drive. Um, I think that I'll see what we can do here on campus to uh, get engaged in that diaper drive. That's definitely a worthy cause and something people can get behind. Coming up on Easter, no more appropriate time to start thinking about uh, uh, the, the gift of giving. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully you as a listener or a viewer, uh, in the case of the radio station or the TV show, uh, learn something every time. I know that I do. Chipola Chipola Healthy Start, as Melissa points out, you can Google them or go to ChipolaHealthyStart.org if you'd like to have more information. We'll be right back.